darlings. I hope that you have enjoyed walking through the Psalms this week just as much as I have. I have really enjoyed hearing from you and getting feedback. I love that. I love how God's word is dwelling richly in your hearts and you're um, unlocking even deeper things and extended truths well past what we're just discussing discussing in these few minutes um, when we start our morning. I'm, I love that. Please keep sending those in. Email uh, through Twitter, through Facebook, please, 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 I love that. And I love the pictures that some of you are posting of just um, the scriptures that you're reading on Instagram or you're making your own pictures or you're finding pictures on Pinterest or whatever. I love that. So please, please, please keep sending that to me. That builds my faith and encourages my heart. So I love that. And I love that really that the Psalms are speaking to us this week. Like I said, that, that I think that this is so real to life's tone that um, these kind of express real emotions and real ideas that a, a real person would be experiencing. One minute there's this total and complete elation and then the next minute you're slammed with the, just life and the earth and then the next minute you're so excited to be on fire for God and then the next minute there's something else that happens. So I've really enjoyed walking through these and today we are going to go into Psalms 139 which is a dearest part of just the entire text of the Bible to me um, for a number of reasons. As a child of God, as a mother, there's a lot of different reasons why this text is so beautiful. Um, but I'm going to actually work today, we're going to go over Psalms 139, 1 through 5, uh, the front end part of it. Um, and it is so, um, it blows my mind really that God wants to know me, first of all, that really just blows up every kind of something that I would understand that the creator of the entire universe, all the cosmos, everything that we see or feel or touch or understand about the world that we live in, God created it and he wants to know me personally and intimately. That's just a mind blow for me. And um, that's why I love this text because it reminds me, the word reminds me that that's exactly what his motivation is for you and for me is to know us, all of us, everything that makes us us. And um, it's so beautiful the way he lays it out here. In Psalms 139, 1, it says, and we're reading all the way through till 5. Um, oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. First of all, it is kind of terrifying to know that everything I'm thinking or feeling or even, I don't even know I'm about to say it or think it. God already knows that I'm about to say it or think it, which is a little crazy. And the thoughts that I have rolling around in my skull, sometimes I think, oh, oh, that's so, I wish God didn't know that that's how I felt about that. But what's so wonderful and what I want us to see and receive from this text is that we are worth the knowing. I think sometimes as women, I feel either ashamed of something in my life or I feel nervous that something about me is going to be like, eek, that's a little much or yikes, I don't really want to know any more about you. Thanks so much and you can just go on your way. And this right here says that I am worth the knowing. As a woman, that speaks straight through my pink earphones and right to my pink heart that I am worth the knowing, that I'm not, it's worth the risk to know me more. I, the word actually know, discern, search, acquainted, known, those are all things that involve action and progressive and continually and constant. Being acquainted with someone means that you're constantly gonna kind of come into their reality. I'm acquainted. I want to be known. I want to know you. I want to search out. That is what God is doing with us, that he wants to know us. He wants to allow, he wants you to allow yourself to be known. I think that that's the other thing. That's the coin flip that um, sometimes even just the knowing that God wants to know me isn't enough, that I need to be able to be vulnerable enough to let God know me, that he is a gentleman and he isn't just going to 
barrel his way through and demand to know how I feel about a situation. He's like the perfect scenario of um, someone that's just going to pull just that emotion out of me. He wants to know me. He wants to lead uh, me out. He doesn't want to push me or provoke me. He wants to lead me. He actually wants to know me and to him to be known and me to be known and it's like this perfect covenant relationship that there is no fear in that love it says in first john that perfect love drives out fear i think so many times being known is in, involves fear especially in this day and age where you can kind of spin your life any way you want to i mean we all have a publicist if you have some form of social media you can spin your life however you want to and there's a lot of fear in actually and authentically being known. But what's so great about God and his character is that he wants to know every part of you. He wants inroads into everything that you think, oh, no one would ever like that part of me or no one would ever understand that part of me. God actually is pursuing that part of you. And then in this wonderful, just, perf just perfect love, God says, you hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. I want to know that I'm safe. As a woman, that is just a huge thing for me. I, I need to know that there's a lot of me spilling out all over everywhere. I I'm, I'm, use my hands a lot to speak. I'm highly emotional. I'm, I spill myself out a lot everywhere. And to know that God in his sovereignty and in his love is behind me, and he's before me and he's hemming me in, not in a controlling way, but actually in this free, like, um, it's like um, when you were a kid, if you were at PE, you know, it, the best part of PE for me was when we would do the parachute. And my daughter's in gymnastics now and a part of her class, sometimes they have this ginormous parachute and they'll flow it up like this. And then the best part is when they scoop it up over their heads and they sit on it and it's this big bubble and there's all sorts of giggling happening, happening underneath it and they laugh and they scream and then, oh, it comes out and then it's still free flowing. It's the same idea. God's love is just this amazing parachute with air and freedom and there's all this um, room to grow and to breathe and yet somehow that's keeping me feeling safe and secure and that no matter where I go, God is right there. That there is nothing about his spirit that's either just behind me or just before me. He is everywhere. You know, my husband and I, Toby, we have this thing that we say, you know, whenever life is kind of giving us this crossroads, we'll say, well, where are we feeling provoked and poked? <laughs> like where the enemy is either pushing us or poking us, like poking your shoulders, like, you know, that I have to make a decision right then or um, where God's spirit or, or the enemy is just kind of antagonizing me or just really he's either in front of me or he's behind me. He's not all around me, but I can just sense that it's one way or the other. And then where is God leading us? Because God's spirit is so fantastic because when it's God's got when it got when it has God's name written all over it, you've got God in front of you leading you lovingly, drawing you. And then you have God's spirit behind you, not in a pushing, but almost in a soothing, like I've got this, whatever you're walking away from or whatever is behind you or whatever is in your past, I'm standing back there as your rear guard. And then in this wonderful, just atmosphere of freedom, God is hemming you in. He is over you. He's, he's all around you as a protection. Today, I want us to see all the ways that, one, that we are not allowing ourselves to be known, that we are actually have written in the side of my Bible, don't live in denial of God's continual presence. I think sometimes we just ignore that he's continually with us. I think we forget partly because we're human and we're flesh, but partly because we consciously decide that God's just not there. But that's not true, that God is there. I, I want to challenge us to pray with our mouths, God, show me where you are right now. Show me how you want me to know you and how I need to allow you to know me. That I need to open my heart for you. And that the other 
part today is I want us to unlock the idea that God, God's perspective and God, the way God wants to love us is that he wants to lead us and draw us, that he is before us and behind us and all around us, not in an attitude of control or manipulation, but in this freedom and in this idea of protection and a surrounding so that we can go and do whatever it is that God has called us to go and do. And there is no fear and there is no reservation because we know that God is with us and that God is for us and that we are worth the knowing. You are worth the knowing. Allow yourself to be known by God today. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.